Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers on the broadcast today. The Speaker of the Nevada Assembly, Jason Frierson, for the whole show on an all-new Nevada Newsmakers. The holidays are upon us, a time of celebration, family gathering, and gratitude. There are gifts to be wrapped, feasts prepared, love shared, and memories made. Life is precious, so let us cherish each other and all that we have. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We thank you for letting us enrich your lives and thank you for your support throughout the year. Happy Holidays. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Hello, is this D&D Roofing? Yes, it is. How may I help you? You did such a great job on my roof. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. Oh, can I speak to your supervisor? Sure. How may I help you? I love your work. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. We're all owners. Well, that's why at D&D we work so hard to keep your home safe and sound. Oh, no wonder. D&D Roofing and Sheet Metal. Local, employee-owned, here for you. Pro Group Management offers workers' comp services to a growing number of industries. As businesses grow and change with the times, the need for a solid workers' comp program must be flexible and up-to-date. The evolving nature of regulations can make staying ahead of complex tasks challenging. But Pro Group Management simplifies the work so your industry can move forward and succeed. Pro Group Management. Workers Comp that works for you. Truck drivers are some of the hardest working people you'll meet delivering over 70% of America's freight and 92% of Nevada's. When there's a natural disaster, they're delivering critical supplies to help those communities recover and rebuild. Every sector of the economy and our nation's military rely on truck drivers. So let's take a moment to say thank you. On the open road or city streets, our truck drivers are rolling to make our economy and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. Nevada Newsmakers tapings in Las Vegas are brought to you by the Las Vegas Metro Chamber of Commerce. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad on No Holds Barred Political Forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're absolutely delighted to welcome back to the program the Speaker of the Nevada Assembly, Jason Fryson. Pleasure to have you back on the program, sir. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, let's start out with um, a political action committee uh, led by former Attorney General in 2018 Republican gubernatorial nominee Adam Laxalt last month called for a special session of the legislature to bring about more cooperation between law enforcement and ICE. What are the chances, if any, of a special session to deal with this? Well, I don't, I don't think that there's a problem to be solved. Uh, we have a limited amount of resources to govern and lead this state, and I'm working with the elected governor uh, to do just that. And so to the extent that we need to address uh, other problems, especially in an unusual circumstance as a special session, we're going to focus on uh, actual problems in Nevada, public funding um, for education and health care, uh, mental health. Uh, these are things that, that we, we combat every day, and these are real problems that we're trying to solve. Um, and I, I think we'd be better uh, leaders by solving actual problems as opposed to uh, dealing with somebody's, you know, talking points for some future campaign. Um, uh, good point there, sir. Um, you, you bring up uh, uh, funding for mental health. Um, we just had Carolyn Goodman on the program, and obviously as mayor of Las Vegas, she is working very hard on the problem of homelessness mm -hmm. uh, in the city of Las Vegas and trying to use that as a model for other communities. Um, as you look at funding for mental health, are we even close to having enough funding or how much more do you think we need? Well, we're not, we're certainly not close to having what we need to address our community's needs. Uh, I, I don't think um, uh, that you know, we have a number of exactly what we need, but I know that we're far behind addressing uh, mental health. And I, I think that uh, mental health uh, issues are part of our problem with homelessness. Um, I, in an ideal world, uh, partners would come together and collaborate and talk about how to solve a problem, I think, in a more collective manner. Um, I, I, I'm not entirely 
sure that the legislature is comfortable with with further criminalizing uh, homelessness in light of the fact that we are underfunding uh, mental health services uh, as it is. I'm not entirely sure this is going to help solve the problem, but it's certainly something that we have to talk about uh, and I think come together collaboratively. When I say collaboratively, I mean cities, county, state, legislature and policy. Uh, if someone had come to us and said for next session, can we talk about funding some programs to help deal with the homelessness problem, uh, you would have found uh, uh, you know, a, a, a welcome to ear. So, so at this point, this is an invitation to Mayor Goodman to come talk to you? Uh, well, yeah, I think the mayor and I have a, have a fine relationship, as, as I do with uh, several members of the city council. Um, but I, I, I do think that in order to really address this problem, uh, it's going to have to be a collective conversation. Um, and, and when you look at the scheme of things that the state has to deal with, um, it's obviously becoming a bigger and bigger problem in Southern Nevada, in Las Vegas. It's also becoming a bigger problem in Northern Nevada as well. So w what are the responsibilities of the legislature towards this? Well, I mean, I, th I think that we have to shepherd good, strong policy for the state, but we also recognize that local governments have a unique op opportunity to address uh, the needs that are specific to th th their communities. Uh, we have uh, extremely hot summers down here in Southern Nevada, uh, extremely cold winters here as well, but we don't have snow uh, like they do in Northern Nevada. Uh, those are the kind of things that will impact uh, shelter opportunities and uh, mobility opportunities to go seek out services. So I, I think that we have to provide an overall structure that invites um, a conversation about solutions, but those solutions are going to be uh, I think on a community by community basis, but again, you know, this is a collective conversation that we need to have, and I don't think that we can uh, do that piecemeal. I think that we're going to have to come together and talk about how to address these needs statewide. Um, as you look at uh, cities and counties, uh, they've been struggling for years now because of the property tax caps. Do you see a point in time where the legislature is going to address property tax caps and perhaps change them? Or is that something that if you did change them, um, everybody who changed them or voted in favor of it would be not reelected the following year? Well, I, I think that the conversation is, is, is uh, bigger than property tax caps. I think that our property tax structure uh, is something that uh, we look at every session, every two years, and we're going to continue to look at it. Uh, it's not just caps. We, we don't have a bottom. We don't have a floor. So when uh, the real estate market uh, crashed, uh, we didn't stop needing emergency rooms and we didn't stop needing public schools, yet the funding stream for those services uh, would decrease far below what we would need to provide those services. So I think we have to have a conversation about uh, making sure that our, our property tax structure is stable so that we can withstand any future uh, economic crash. Uh, a, a lot of folks are talking about uh, you know, a, a future economic downturn in one way or, or another, and we have to be prepared for that, but we still need to be able to provide our basic services. So th to the extent that it's a, a conversation about property tax, uh, globally, I think we do need to have that conversation, but it's not just a function of raising anybody's taxes. It's not just a function of uh, dealing with the cap as opposed to st stabilizing the structure so that we all can continue to know what we can expect to, to bring in. Um, and when you look, you know, we, we have a split in the, the tax space between uh, businesses mm -hmm. and, and personal property, which, you know, a lot of us think is, uh, you know, unconstitutional to even begin with, but who's going to argue about that because everybody's taxes would go up if uh, it was declared unconstitutional. Um, but would you see um, in, in a future discussion on property tax um, that, that it would be you know, even that, that both uh, entities will be paying the same. I don't know if that's realistic. I think that um, we're going to have to have a conversation. Again, we have a citizen's legislature. The, 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 the challenge with a citizen's legislature is we all have day jobs and we only meet for 120 days every other session. The benefit of a citizen's legislature is we are there to facilitate a conversation amongst people who are on the front lines of these issues. So I think that we need to bring the business community, uh, I think uh, consumer advocates, uh, tax experts together to talk about uh, what's best for Nevada moving forward. And again, I think both from an uh, individual property tax perspective and a business perspective, uh, what we want is uh, consistency and, and reliability. I think that folks want to know what to expect and uh, we can't continue to have significant shifts in, in, in tax policy that create an environment that I think is uncertain. So to the extent that we can provide certainty for the long term, that's going to have to be a conversation with, with everybody at the table. Um, th there's obviously over the last year or two, there's been talk about the coming recession mm -hmm. and obviously 
when one looks at an economy, everything that goes up must come down. I mean, that's just uh, part of the nature. Um, but but I'm presuming that you are not anticipating something on the order of what happened in 2008. Well, we certainly hope not, but uh, I think we have to be prepared for whatever might happen. Uh, we have a big election coming up. I think that's going to have a big impact on our, our, our nation's economy and subsequently the state's economy. Uh, we have to be in, in prepared. What way, in, in, okay, so, so let, let's dig a little deeper into that. So, so in what way? I mean, because uh, with the current president, and, and I'm, I'm not talking about party affiliations right. here or right. personalities, but the economy is booming. And the economy in Las Vegas is booming. The economy in northern Nevada is booming. And if we actually get a lands bill through, um, then we would see even more booming across rural parts of the state. Um, so, you know, if, if, if a president takes the heat for a bad economy, mm -hmm. then I think that a president should get the credit for a good economy. So uh, do you see the... Um, and, and, and if a Democrat were to become president, it would seem that they would want to continue the policies that are working and that are giving this, this great economy versus, um, you know, that they would reverse things. I mean, I couldn't imagine that. Well, I mean, you know, this is obviously a national conversation, but uh, I think it, it might be somewhat subjective to, in an isolation, isolated conversation, say, the economy is good when we also have to take into account the debt that we're passing on to future generations and and we have to be responsible with that as well that will come to a head at some point and we will have to pay for it at some point so uh, to the extent that uh, we are incurring greater debt uh, in order to create I, th I think the perception that everything is great uh, we're gonna have to you know at some point pay some bills um, and, and, you know, to what extent we pass that on to the next generation, I think, is, is something for policymakers to, 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 to think about. Uh, but, you know, again, on a state level, uh, we have to be prepared and we don't know what's going to happen. So advocating for one or the other, uh, I don't know, but I know that we have to be ready for the possible change in uh, uh, approach from Washington, D.C., um, and we have to be ready for that. Uh, so if it's not going to be as big of a dip as we had in 2008, Great. I hope it. I hope it's not going to be that. But I think most folks are are anticipating uh, a, a change because we are increasingly incurring additional debt. And you know, uh, just from a personal point of view, uh, I've been hearing my whole career in news from going back to 1980 that the debt is going to kill us. Um, a year ago, I talked to Senator Reid, and he said we're already past the tipping point, mm -hmm. and yet we continue to add on to the debt. It's not a Republican or a Democratic thing because they're all spending too much money. Right. And yet, we, I, I think that the people who are paying the price are the senior citizens and people who are saving because they get re no, no return on their money. That, that seems to me that we're heading for bankruptcy uh, in our senior, uh, senior citizen population because they get no return. I mean, you know, one, two percent on their money. It doesn't even keep up with inflation. Well, I think seniors are suffering and I, and I think seniors deserve better. But it's not just seniors. I think young people are suffering. I think student loan debt is skyrocketing. These are things that are going to come to a head at some point um, and it will be responsible to deal with them, uh, uh, you know, in a, in a long term fashion. Uh, we can't continue to have a pendulum that swings back and forth. Uh, we've had uh, national debt be out of control and then we've had to curtail policies to make sure that we got that under control to where we actually had a surplus and so that would uh, be the end of the Clinton administration exactly and so I, I think that that uh, speaks to a responsible way to govern uh, look on a state level we can't operate in a deficit we have to balance our books uh, and so I'm sensitive to the fact that we need to make sure that we live with our means uh, and I think that that's something that folks in DC could learn some valuable lessons from at some point we will write that down and we will send that to them. All right, let's take a break. More with the speaker when we come back. Tamarack Junction is South Reno's hotspot with over 450 of the latest slots and video games. Sully Sports Bar, the Dining Car Restaurant, William Hill Sportsbook, and the Tamarack Steakhouse and Lounge. We're just north of the Summit Mall in South Virginia. Yeah. Are you learning? This place is great. Huh? You gotta try this. Wow, this stuff is great. People are gonna love it. Yes. Yes, they will. Hi, I'm Eric Robnett, owner of Home Energy Experts. Has this ever happened to you? Honey, did you remember to turn down the thermostat? <sighs> Forgetting to set the temperature? 
not fun. We can help. Our new smart thermostat keeps the temperature set for your comfort all by itself. I'm feeling hot now. <sighs> to increase your comfort, go to homeenergyexperts.com for details. That's homeenergyexperts.com. The signs and symptoms of cataracts can start out small with subtle changes in your vision. So don't wait. Be proactive and take your vision into your own hands. If you're experiencing the onset of cataracts or just have questions, contact your eye care professional or call Eye Care Associates of Nevada today. Dr. Hiss has years of experience specializing in the surgical correction of eye disorders and has completed over 84,000 vision correcting procedures. At Eye Care Associates of Nevada, we'll change the way you look at the world. The Tamarack Junction Steakhouse is known for signature steaks, handcrafted cocktails, and world-class wines. Join us Thursdays and Friday nights from 4.30 to 6.30 in the Steakhouse Lounge for live music, gourmet plates, and well-priced wines just north of the Summit Mall on South Virginia. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation. An honor to have here the Speaker of the Nevada Assembly, Jason Frierson. Um, you said something in the break here um, that I thought was interesting. you want to repeat that? Uh, about the, the tax taxes. Yes. Well, I, I think that um, again, we were talking about a, you know the the strength of the economy, but we also have to recognize that myself and many of my colleagues have had to pay taxes uh, for the first time in their adult life, and when you have the tax burden shifting from uh, uh, spread out to uh, I think the middle class, where you have to be wealthy in order to really be able to accomplish or achieve any type of tax relief. Um, that's going to eventually come to a head. And I think folks are going to eventually recognize that when they have to pay taxes, but um, millionaires are, are not paying that, that same level of taxes, um, that they're going to, I think, eventually turn out to make a change. All right. So do you have a concern um, as you see more and more people registering away from Republican and Democrat mm -hmm. uh, to independent or nonpartisan? Um, that that that's because people look at Washington DC and go nothing's working I mean Republicans have traditionally been one way Democrats have traditionally been one way and yet we're seeing the spending go on and the tax base appealing to, to the wealthy and the other side of that is of course that the wealthy can afford to have the best accountants right and if they don't have the best accountants then they move off to other countries right. with their money I, I don't know that i'm concerned I, I believe that my job as speaker my job as, as assemblyman in district eight is uh to reflect uh, my district and whether they're registered as a democrat or a republican or nonpartisan or independent uh, i think that we have a responsibility to be accessible to those folks and to reflect what uh, they are feeling about policies moving forward and so I, I don't think that we lose in that way. Uh, I have been passionate about uh, voting reforms and expanding access to the polls so that every eligible voter can vote. And I think uh, so long as we continue to make it uh, something uh, enticing for every single eligible voter, they have an opportunity to vet candidates and vote, vote uh, for candidates that reflect their priorities and policy regardless of their, their party affiliation. I think that's a good thing. All right, a uh, different topic here. Um, you were a standout running back under Col uh, Coach Chris Alt for UNR. Um, and according to the Las Vegas Review Journal, you and State Senator Ivana Cancella, who was also on the program a couple of days ago, uh, are in the early stages of putting together a bill together that would allow athletes who play for the state universities mm -hmm. to actually benefit from the endorsements, et cetera, which they are not able to <coughs> at this right. point, as everybody knows. Uh, would you elaborate? Well, sure. Uh, and it is in the early stages of, of conversations about this. Uh, I played uh, in, in a, on a Division One team, and college sports was, was very good to me. I enjoyed it, uh, and it helped me pay for college. Uh, but I do think that uh, there are athletes nowadays whose likenesses are being used. My likeness wasn't used. I wasn't that standout of a running back. Um, uh, but for those athletes whose likeness are used, I can't imagine uh, going to the store and seeing your actual face on a video game and uh, someone else being um, uh, made wealthy over that. So. I, I think that there is room. I'm, I'm thrilled that the NCAA has actually advanced some policy to embrace this concept. Exactly how they're going to do it is going to be left to be seen. Uh, but there, there are different forms. And I think a lot of folks automatically assume that uh, college athletes are going to be paid to play. And uh, the concerns about, A, they're getting you know college uh, tuition paid, but also whether or not that's going to in influence the game. I don't share the, you know, the, the, the view that that's the only way. So for 
uh, athletes that have medical issues after they're done playing, maybe there's a way to set aside uh, funds to make sure that their medical issues, uh, their you know head injury issues, are able to be dealt with in the long term. Uh, there's also an issue of college, college athletes and whether or not they finish college when they're done participating. So maybe uh, there can be funds set aside to make sure that they either finish college or are put on a good career path. Uh, but either way, when you're profiting off of someone else's likeness, I think the NC2A has recognized uh, the need to, to move forward in a way that allows them to benefit from that as well. Universities have been benefiting as well as the NC2A. Uh, and I think that it's, it's, it's fair and it makes sense given the sacrifices, uh, not just in playing because it's, it was a blessing to be able to play in college. Uh, but, uh, you know, I joke now and say I can run if a dog is chasing me. Uh, I, I've had four or five surgeries on knees and shoulders. Um, and these go long beyond your five years of, of uh, active participation in college. So I think that it's, it's high time for a conversation. Uh, I think the NC2A is ready, and I'm looking forward to working with uh, Senator Consala to, to, to work on exactly how we do it in a way that works for Nevada. Okay, more with the speaker when we come back. Dimitri Prine here for Design Outdoor. Come visit Design Outdoor's store and backyard to see our wide selection of fire pits, barbecues, and pizza ovens natural stone water features, and fountains, and frost-proof pottery. Our store and backyard are located at 11600 South Virginia, just north of DeMonte Ranch Parkway. Visit designoutdoor.com or call us at 851-9499. I can't do it. Stupid, like my mom. We can't do anything at Mommy's because you won't pay child support. Dad said you cheated, and he's not even sure he's my dad. Mommy said you left both of us, so she isn't going to let me see you. I look just like my father. I'm divorce attorney Marilyn York, and I may represent men, but hate has no gender, only casualties. Please, stop sacrificing your children in your war against your ex. Hi, I'm Dave Newman. Remember me? I used to be the house detective, and now I'm a realtor, full-time at Remax Realty Affiliates. And a lot of people ask me, how's the market? You know what? It's fantastic. If you're even kicking around the idea of buying or selling, give me a call. Let's talk about it. Call me at Remax Realty Affiliates and just ask for the guy who used to be the house detective, Dave Newman. Everyone is talking about opioids. But they're not the only drugs that can be harmful if taken in large quantities or not as prescribed. You also need to be aware of side effects from anxiety drugs, muscle relaxants, sleep aids, and stimulants. Mixing prescription drugs with other drugs or alcohol can be dangerous. If you take Ambien with a glass of wine, it may be enough to stop you from breathing. Prescribed drugs can be just as dangerous as illegal drugs. Take medications only as directed. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with the Speaker of the Nevada Assembly, Jason Frierson. So obviously in northern Nevada, we saw, you know, great benefits given to Tesla for the investment that they made. Uh, Steve Hill was on the program, who is former head of GoEd, now runs the Convention Authority in Las Vegas. And he was saying how Tesla had exceeded all the uh, numbers that were required mm -hmm. uh, for the benefits that they have gotten from the state. Um, there is, you know, you know, um, a lot of business people were not happy with the legislative session. They felt that it was not a good session for business. There are also rumblings now um, that we are not going to see any more Tesla-like deals for North Nevada, that all of that from the state is going to be pushed to Southern Nevada. A, is that true? And B, why? Well, I, I don't think that that's true. I don't think it's predetermined whether or not um, we're going to be looking at policies that benefit any portion of the state. I lived in Northern Nevada for 10 years and, and Northern Nevada was very good to me. Uh, and, and so I feel like I have a responsibility to shepherd policy for the whole state. Uh, we do have to balance uh, uh, corporate giveaways and whether or not we in the long term uh, get uh, a benefit that justifies it. I think there is a uh, concern uh, in the community about how much longer we can do that. Uh, but I, I do think that we need to continue to focus on economic development. Uh, I think it's unfortunate that anybody in the business community um, doesn't also acknowledge their seat at the table and the fact that there was a, uh, you know, uh, effort with minimum wage and other things where they were active participants in the conversation and shaping policies that could have been uh, much further right or left, but, but fortunately they were at the table to be able to, 
to, to have, you know, be heard. And I, I think that that was a productive uh, part of the session that was unexpected and I think uh, is often overlooked. Um, so, so, you, uh, so if a company were to look at a, a billion dollar plus investment in Northern Nevada, um, that you would have no hesitation in a special session if the governor called one uh, to be able to uh, put together funding? Well, there's, those are a lot of ifs. Um, if, if the governor called a special right. session, that's a big deal. Um, and so I think that every opportunity we have to advance economic development in our state, we, we, we have an obligation to uh, assess that and look for it. Uh, but I don't know that a special session is necessarily warranted. Uh, but again, I'd have to uh, look at any particular circumstance uh, as it ar arose to see whether or not it needed a special session and we could deal with it in a subsequent session or if it was even viable for long-term policy. Um, last question, uh, Raiders Stadium coming, you excited? I'm excited. I was a Raiders fan before uh, the stadium came. I was not in the legislature for the vote in 2015. Uh, I'm not entirely personally thrilled about exactly how it all went down. Uh, but, because? Well, it was a special session. I think that there was uh, a lot of concern that, that um, uh, I think could have been uh, more thoroughly vetted. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't envy the position that those legislators were in. Uh, the stadium is in my district. Uh, I drive past uh, uh, it as it's being developed every day. Uh, I think that it's going to be an exciting addition to the community, uh, and I look forward to uh, having that component come to our community. So do you feel that the end result was uh, was justified? I, I think it's left to be seen. I don't know that a publicly funded stadium has ever paid for itself, but I also think that there are benefits to having a professional team come to Nevada and to Las Vegas in particular uh, that are great for the community, great for excitement, and uh, great for jobs. And so I think that it's left to be seen. Uh, I'm excited to see where it goes. Mr. Speaker, thank you so much for taking the time to be here. I know how incredibly busy you are, you. and I look forward to you coming back. Thank Absolutely. you. And we'll be right back. Nevada Newsmakers tapings in Las Vegas are brought to you by the Las Vegas Metro Chamber of Commerce. A bird's eye captures its surroundings at different heights. At Brian Culp of Photography, we can make your imagination soar over buildings, parks, cityscapes, and beyond. Brian's images tell the story and get the job done. If you need a new perspective to tell your story, contact Brian today. Brian Culpa Photography. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Hi, my name's Marilyn Miner, and I'm sure you'd agree that Nevada's a very special place to live. I was born here, and my husband and I have raised our family here. I feel it's a privilege to live and work in the Truckee Meadows. I especially enjoy helping my clients reach their real estate goals. Sometimes the smallest details provide the greatest satisfaction. I'd be complimented to talk to you about your next move. Call Marilyn Miner at Dixon Realty, 742-1280, or log on to MarilynMiner.com. As always, you can watch Nevada Newsmakers 24 hours a day at NevadaNewsmakers.com, or you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll see you on the next broadcast.